everybody, this is Tolkien for another Shadowverse video and today will be the fourth installment of Meta Monday. So first, a quick word about Unlimited. There was a SEO Unlimited Open this weekend, as well as one JCG Open in the past week, but at the moment we really lack data about Unlimited games, and I will therefore do more Unlimited content next week, as rotation will be in a little bit of a lull just before the release of Brigade of the Sky. So if you're interested in Unlimited, look forward to next week's special Meta Monday on the full Don't Break Night Edge Unlimited metagame, looking at three months worth of results to try and identify what is the best before the release of the new cards. Regarding rotation, we got a very lucky weekend regarding competitive Shadowverse. We had the Pan America Top 8, the European Top 8, as well as the Rage Open Grand Finals. This means we had 24 of the best players in the world bring three rotation decks to their respective tournaments, which means we get a very, very good snapshot of the current metagame. So let's take a look at what the 24 players brought to the table. As you can see, Dragon is pretty broken at the moment. Phil Lane is really pushing the craft through the finish line. From almost complete irrelevancy a month ago, no, more than 90% of the players decided to bring it to the final stage of their tournaments. What's interesting though, is that among those 22 dragon decks, only 12 were PDK decks and 10 of them were classic ramp dragon decks. In particular, out of the 7 players who brought Dragoncraft to the Rage Finals, only 1 was playing PDK, while 6 were playing classic ramp decks. But Dragon, in general, is really powered up by the presence of Philane, which really helps bridge Dragon to its really strong late game. In second place, we have Forestcraft, with 15 out of 24 possible deck lists. What's interesting to note is that out of these 15 deck lists, 13 of them were mid-range decks with Cassiopeia, one was an aggro deck, and one was a neutral deck. So it's really interesting to see that mid-range Forestcraft really took back its place in the meta game, especially with Swordcraft falling a little bit out of favor, and Forestcraft being able to answer Dragon's game plan really well thanks to tons of targeted removal, as well as a very strong late game. In third place we have Swordcraft, a mainstay of competitive Shadowverse ever since Celia and Sky Fortress got printed. Swordcraft was sort of equally represented amongst all regions, with almost half the field of every region bringing it. Then we move on to Runecraft and Bloodcraft being tied for fourth place. Runecraft in particular is very interesting, with three spellboost archetypes and five ginger decks, three of the ginger decks being from EU. In particular, two Japanese players decided to bring spellboost to the table, and Kasago, the eventual winner of the Rage Finals, took it home with spellboost. But the thing is, he really played it like a master, and I'm not sure anybody else on Earth is able to play spellboost to the level of Kasago. You'll be able to see it tomorrow in Tournament Tuesday, where I'll be analyzing his finals game with Spellboost. But what's really interesting is really that Europe absolutely loves Ginger, while other regions aren't so hard on it. Then we move to Bloodcraft, with two Japanese, four American and two European players deciding to take it into battle. As we saw last week, Blood is not really popular, but it's still posting really decent results, and I feel like it's sort of an underexplored archetype at the moment. But with Belfagor rotating out in one week, Blood will really have to adapt if it hopes to stay alive. Then we have the bottom three archetypes with Havencraft, Watercraft and Shadowcraft. Among the four Havencraft decks, one of them was a Tenko Shrine deck, nine was the Taiwanese player, decided to take it to the Rage Finals, but it didn't really go well for him. And then both of the Portalcraft players were in Japan, and both of them decided to not run Safira, counting just on Radiant Artifacts to close out games. Meanwhile, Shadowcraft is still completely inexistent in the meta game, but it's getting some help in Brigade of the Sky, so I think we'll be seeing more Shadowcraft in the next few weeks. So that's it for this episode of Meta Monday. Since the current rotation is coming to an end, there's not much to add. If you're grinding for this top 10k or top 1k in Grandmaster, well, you should likely pick Dragoncraft. So see you guys tomorrow for a very interesting Tournament Tuesday. And also don't forget to tune in next week to Meta Monday for an overview of the full DBNE Unlimited history. Have a good day.